What's going on, everybody? This is Joe, and I am back for another Ikoria pre-release pack opening. We have done six of these so far. This is number seven, and we do have one more after this. I did not... Okay, that's fine. I did not start this as I usually do for us to be able to rip right into it, but that's fine. Uh, hopefully you've been enjoying these. Obviously, stay tuned for Corset 2021 immediately following these videos. Uh, in fact, I may have even peppered them in beforehand. Uh, well, this is unfortunate. We have the blue D20 with the Ikoria set symbol. Obviously that in and of itself is not unfortunate, but if, as we look over here, as I place it, uh, we already have two white, two red, and now three blue, um, which means that no matter what is in our last kit, uh, I am not going to get all five colors. I didn't necessarily have delusions of the fact that I would get all five colors, but I would have liked to have gotten all five colors. It would have been nice. Um, and it's unfortunate that that did not work out that way. We do have a code to give away in this video. I will uh, be sure to do that. We're going to set that on the side. Uh, and I, I don't know why I'm like fumbling with this stuff so much, but we can show you all of the little inserts here. This is the code that will be given away later. Obviously it is on the other side of this. So if you need a code for MTG Arena, stay tuned to the video. Uh, we will kind of randomly stick that in amongst the stuff here. There's this little bifold uh, that's got mutating your creatures. It tells you how to build a pre-release pack, uh, etc. So we will leave that on the side. There's also the divider so that you can divide your deck and your sideboard and things like that um, with gem razor on it. Also, obviously, here in the background. Uh, and then we have the thicker punch-out token for the uh, flying tokens, indestructible tokens, or counters, I should say, excuse me. Tokens are a very different thing. Uh, the, the counters for all the different abilities. Uh, I will say, looking online, these are, like, the thicker ones are a little bit uh, more expensive than others. Like, I don't know, like a dollar, which is not much, but when you consider that there are some rares that aren't even worth that much, uh, that's kind of impressive. I don't know how much of it you saw when I was looking through it, but... Our promo foil rare companion is Karuga the Macro Sage, which is pretty cool. I don't know how many of these I have overall, um, but I don't think it's many. And so now getting one as a promo foil is pretty nice. I'm trying not to get too much glare so you can actually see the foiling pattern. That looks pretty good. But yeah, Karuga the Macro Sage is kind of cool. Something to keep in mind uh, is if we want to use it as a companion. Uh, I mean, I guess at the time that pre-release would have been, it would have been the old companion rule as it is written, as opposed to what is now the new companion rule. But still, uh, converted mana cost three or greater would be what we would be looking for if we wanted to play Karuga as a companion. Of course, just putting it in the deck means that if the deck is part blue or green, uh, then that would be fully acceptable to put Karuga in. And then obviously if it is both, uh, that is even better. Let me see if I can get this a little bit better for everybody. Perfect. So we start with this solid footing. An almighty brushwog, durable coil bug, a Dranith healer, heightened reflexes, Aegis turtle, unexpected fangs, essence symbiote, Love that little guy. He's adorable. Light of Hope. Avian Oddity is the first uncommon. I feel like that came up kind of quick. We might have a foil. Uh, but there's an Avian Oddity. This is a pretty cool card. Bastion of Remembrance is our second uncommon. Sweet colors on this card. The art's really nice. And a Rogrin Crystal. Very cool. So if we end up in uh, the Jeskai colors, then we can use this crystal. And our Rare or Mythic is... A Titan's Nest. I have uh, stated before that I am not in love with this card, despite the fact that it's Sultai, and that is definitely my three, my favorite three-color wedge. But still, not in love with this card. I think it's kind of just okay, especially, you know, obviously I'm referring to Limited here, and, and uh, specifically Prudently Sealed, just because that's what we're looking at. But yeah, so I'm not in love with this. Behind it, we have a Corpse Churn. It is a Foil Common. That foiling pattern is sweet, though. Look at that. I like that quite a bit. The, um, the like yellows in here, I don't know how well that is coming across, but I know in person that's spectacular. That looks really, really cool. See? Very, very nice foiling pattern on Corpse Churn. Behind Corpse Churn, we have a Swamp, 
very cool swamp as well, and a beast token. Awesome. Okay. You know what? Uh, I've been mixing it up as to where I put these. This is going to be the code giveaway for this particular video. Just as a reminder, you can only use one of these codes per account on MTG Arena. So if you have already used one, this one will not work for you. So save you some time. Don't even try. Uh, and if you do get this code, we ask uh, if you want to leave it in the comments below so that other people don't waste their time. That would be cool. But uh, this is our little way of saying thank you for watching all of our stuff. We really do hope that you are enjoying it. And we hope that if you do use this code that you get some pretty cool stuff on Arena. And we would love to hear the cool things that you open. But thank you all sincerely so very much. And obviously, we hope that you stick around for the rest of the video. We have Kogla the Titan Ape on this pack. And inside of the Kogla pack, we start with... A cathartic reunion. The story between these two uh, is really cute among all these cards. Divine Arrow, nice one. Glimmer Bell, also a very nice one. Elemental Jellyfish. Mutual Destruction, I love this art so much. Fully Grown. Night Squad Commando. Plummet, if Amy were here, she would be very excited. Amy loves Plummet. Dranith Healer. Raking Claws. Hampering Snare, cool colors on this one too. Momentum Rumbler is our first uncommon, this is a great card. A Chittering Harvester, speaking of good cards, is the second, and Barrier Breach is the third. I wouldn't say this is a great card, but I would say that when we have used this, um, I've been very happy that it's been in our deck. Because cycling it away is not a huge deal, but when you get somebody with a Barrier Breach, my god, it feels good. And I'm sure that they're not very pleased about it, which is obviously not the goal behind you putting cards in your deck, but it probably means you're doing well in game-wise, so there's that. Uh, and our rare or mythic in this pack is a Lava Brink Venturer. This is not a bad card. I mean, this does uh, complicate things a little bit in terms of our rares and mythics so far, but or obviously just rares, but still, this card's fantastic. I would put this in, uh, if I'm playing any kind of white at all, this card gets in because it's very, very good. Behind it, we have a Rugged Highlands, which is nice to get a non-basic in the land slot so that it can help us fix our colors a bit, if we were to try. And a Cat Bird token, which is adorable. Look at that little guy. Or Cat Bird. We then have the Prickly Marmoset on this pack. And in this pack... Much less uh, visually intimidating than Kogla the Titan Ape, um, but I'm sure some people who've played against a um, like a good enough cycling deck in Limited will tell you that there's otherwise not much difference. Solid footing in terms of uh, you know impact of when the card uh, hits the battlefield or how scary it is. Frost Vale Ambush. This card's great. Spell Eater Wolverine. A Bush Meat Poacher. Wilt. Hampering Snare again. Evolving Wilds, more fixing. Ooh, Blood Curdle is very nice. Plummet again. Another Dranith Healer. A Footfall Crater for some cycling. Heartless Act, uh, and obviously the Footfall Crater was our first uncommon. Heartless Act is a very nice card. So with Heartless Act and Blood Curdle in the same pack, that's a pretty good sign that Black is good, at least in this pack so far. And... Ooh, whoa, this is an alt art that we don't have yet. My god, this card's cool looking. Holy crap! I love it. I've said before, I'll say again, these alt arts are absolutely my jam. If they're not yours, I completely understand, uh, and I apologize for geeking out about them, if you will. It is on brand for me, but uh, yeah, these, these arts are insane, and I love them so very much. This is fantastic. What a great card uh, and great art. And this isn't even a rare or mythic. So that's next. Our rare or mythic is a, well, okay, a Karuga the Macro Sage. Uh, interesting. We got two of them. That is not the first time that has happened in a pre-release pack um, of the eight that we've opened. This is the second time this has happened where we got one of the companions as a promo foil and then in the packs we got it as well. That's fine, I guess, if we could make it work. Uh, if we go blue... I guess we could do the Lord Dracus as well, but we would kind of want to go black too. Although I guess we do have Titan's Nest, but God, I, I really don't want that. Uh, <laughs> as always, if you have ideas uh, of the deck, 
uh, at any point, leave them in the comments below of like what kind of a deck you would play if you open this kit. But yeah, double Karuga the Macro Sage is definitely something. Behind that, we have a Plains and uh, one of these smaller versions of the Punch-Out tokens, or the thinner, I guess, versions of the Punch-Out counters. I keep saying tokens. Counters. Three more packs to go. We are halfway through. We have another Kogla the Titan 8-pack. <clears throat> and in this pack, we have... Appropriately, uh, because we had Kogla on the front, we also have Ferocious Tigerilla on the inside. We have a Checkpoint Officer. It's a good card. Another Frostvale Ambush. A prickly marmoset. We have some interesting stuff for a cycling deck, too. A fertilid. Whoops. Just went right past the Whisper Squad. A Savai Sabretooth. Anticipate. Cloud Piercer. is a cool card. Another alt art in Vulpakeet. This one I have seen, this one we have opened, but hey, I'm not I'm not complaining. Vulpakeet. A rooting Moloch is our first uncommon. Very nice. An Ivy Elemental is the second, and a Storm Wild Caprador is the third. This card is fine. It needs burn spells. Like, your opponent's not just going to burn this thing out unless they have, like, I don't know, a sweeping burn spell that does it to everyone, but they'd probably hold it back if this were on the field. But yeah, I've, I've run into issues where people have been able to try to burn this thing and it becomes huge and kills me. So, you know, it's not terrible. Uh, and our rare or mythic in this pack is an inspired ultimatum. So we did see the Jeskai land, the, or the uh, crystal, the Rogren crystal earlier. So that could help us cast this. It's not great, um, but I guess Karuga is half blue, so we could play it with just its blue half. Uh, we do have the Lava Brink Venturer as well for white. So maybe we're just in those three colors. We're in, in Jeskai. We could probably do it. We have an Evolving Wilds as well. Um, I know the dual land that we got, the Rugged Highlands, is red-green, so that's not perfect. But still, here's an Inspired Ultimatum. Maybe we play it, maybe we don't. Again, um, let us know your thoughts as well in the comments. Behind it, we have... Okay. Uh, Tranquil Cove. So that's good. This is white and blue. I like that. Um, so yeah, this could help. Maybe we are Jeskai and we try to make an Inspired Ultimatum work. Behind Tranquil Cove, also a Human Soldier token. We have two packs remaining. Let's see what we can do. We have a, another Kogla, the Titan Ape pack, which is just lovely. Lots of Koglas in here, apparently. And we start with this Thieving Otter, Spell Eater Wolverine, a Garrison Cat, Phase Dolphin, which is a whale, We've had many discussions on this. A Serrated Scorpion, Survivor's Bond, Dream Tail Heron, Adaptive Shimmerer, Vulpakeet Non Alt Art this time, Moss Coat Goriak, a Sonorous Howl Bonder is our first uncommon, a Mystic Subduel is the second, and Bastion of Remembrance the second is the third interestingly and confusingly enough. And our rare or mythic in this pack is... Ooh, Garuda Doom of Depths. Okay, so yeah, I mean, just with with our rares right now, if we don't play Titan's Nest, we could play every other one if we go uh, Jeskai. Because Garuda can be double blue, Ker both Karugas can be double blue as well. That's uh, That's pretty good. Also, notably, with our rares at least... Uh, all of them fit into the Karuga um, restriction. So that's pretty nice. But yeah, Garuda would definitely get in. This card's great. Uh, we have a forest behind that and a human soldier token. We have one pack remaining. It is a Vivian Reed pack. Let's see what Vivian has for us and what we can do with her. Um, hopefully we get some more good... Jeskai stuff, because it definitely seems like that's the direction that we should be going. We have a Spontaneous Flight to start, a Wingfold Terran, very good card, Tentative Connection, Solid Footing, Adventurous Impulse, Whisper Squad again, that's only two of these, so it's not terrible. We don't have like a million of them and not looking at playing that color. A Fire Prophecy is very nice for a Jeskai deck. 
Savai Sabretooth again, Migratory Greathorn, Gloom Pangolin, again, Amy will be upset that she's not here for this, a Primal Empathy, damn, not being able to play that sucks a little bit, I love this card a lot, uh, and the green is very, would, would not really work if we're trying to go Jeskai. We have a Swallow Hole, this will work in a Jeskai deck, and a Savai Thundermane would also work in a Jeskai deck. Obviously, we would have to kind of check our cycling. Like, just because the colors work doesn't mean the card is an auto-include. Um, we can check and see what kind of cyclers we have. Plus, this is two mana, so if we want to go with Karuga the Macro Sage, we would not be able to play this card. Although, I'll, I guess notably, we wouldn't be able to play Swallow Hole either. Let's see if this last card helps us or hurts us. The last card in this pack, and our last rare or mythic, is... Wow, that helps us a lot. Winota, Joiner of Forces, it is a mythic. Winota is a fantastic card. I love using her on Arena uh, for some fun games uh, in Standard, just with a random deck that I've put together. This card is fantastic, so I very much appreciate that we got it, especially in a deck where we are trying to go uh, Jeskai. Because with Garuda and Karuga, which is very confusing to try to say back to back, but still, with both Karudas actually and Garuga, Winota is probably pretty happy. Lots of legendary creatures in this deck. So yeah, that is probably the direction I would go. I would love to hear your opinions as well as I have said multiple times. But behind Winota, a Plains and a Catbird the Second. <laughs> Very nice. So I guess what else to leave you looking at but our awesome final open in Winota, Joiner of Forces. She works very well with, as I said, with our companions. If we want to go with Karuga, that's fine. We would be missing out on a couple of things. As we talked about, Swallow Hole is actually pretty good. I know that there's some good black removal, although it was really mainly in that one pack, so um, we wouldn't be losing a ton by not playing it, but it would be something. It would be a bit of a sacrifice, but I still think we could definitely make it work. Uh, again, with our ultimatum, uh, we could probably get some good stuff going. But again, I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. What would you play out of this deck? Did I open well? Am I a luck sack? Or uh, was this underwhelming for you? Because I'm pretty happy about it. Oh, and actually, now that I glance over, uh, we should have known just based on our discussion of the dice. Wow. Yep, definitely didn't notice that. That's pretty funny. Anyway, <laughs> thank you all so very much for watching. Uh, I really do hope that you enjoyed. From us here at the Geek For All family of channels, I have been Joe. Uh, please feel free to do all that fun YouTube stuff. You can like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications to find out when all of our videos come out. You can check out our other channels and our other series. Um, our Video Games For All channel is booming right now, so you should definitely go check that out as well. But for now, as we always say, in whichever video of ours you watch next, we will see you all next time. Thanks, everybody.